And here we go. What's up guys? GH here. In this video, we're going to go over the stuff that you can do in the end game of Tree of Savior. To be more specific, this video will show you guys what to do in the later part of the game. You know, content that will help you keep busy and keep playing. And with that said, strap yourself right in and let's do this. Okay, the moment I drop down into the game, I ask myself, what should I do first? And what comes into mind is events. And events, as you all know, is different every update. But one thing is for sure, it will probably give halfway decent item stuff that can help you grow. So the first thing that you need to do in the end game is events. The next content to do, I think, is... You all probably know this, and it's the leveling dungeon. It gives EXP, money, shards, and class points. Do it, especially if your level is not maxed out yet. The third content that I think you should do is challenge mode. This content will give you a lot of EXP, silver, and items. Some of which is really valuable, so don't forget to do challenge mode. I think I should just drop the numbers and just mention the content. Because I can feel this is gonna be a long video. Anyway, the next one should be unique raids. I only advise doing Tomb of the White Crow and Lepid of Terra Junction. Because those dungeons gives half decent items that you may need. You can do the other raid dungeons for fun or if you really want something there. And of course, if you're doing unique raids, the next step is legendary raids. This is where the good stuff is. There's Legendary Tomb of the White Crow and Junction Legendary. There is different modes to play this Legendary Raid, so see what you can do. There's Party Mode and Solo. And yeah, I've been talking about Raids, and I guess I should mention that you can warp for free in the Raid Dungeons by just clicking Warp here. Just press that button and you will be warped in the entrance of the dungeon. There's also Earth Tower and Velcover Legendary, but I don't advise doing those. You can try to do Velco and pray for a card, but I highly doubt it. But if you're feeling lucky, go ahead, have at it. Another content that comes into mind is farming mercenary badges. But how do you get mercenary badges? And why farm mercenary badges? I'm gonna answer why farm mercenary badges first. Okay guys, this is the reason. Go to Clypeda and go to this location. Check all the items there. If you have mercenary badges, you can buy some of it. And as you can see, a lot of the items there is helpful in some way. And that answers that question. So now, how do you get mercenary badges? The first thing that comes into mind is uphill. You can do this content by heading to Salas and talking to this NPC. Gather up a party and have fun. The next content is Remnant of Bernice. You can do this content by going to the main city, Clypeda, and talking to this NPC. Remnant of Bernice is kinda like survival mode, last for as long as you can, and you will be rewarded based on how far you got. They will reward you weekly, so keep checking this button and hit claim reward to get your mercenary badges. Another way to get mercenary badges is dimensional collapse point. The level required for this content is level 440 and to participate in the dimensional collapse, you need to get the DCP scroll from the Sage Envoy here. And when you have it, just use it in the new maps, i.e. West Jungers, to Path of Decision. And after using it, there will be a portal that will give you an option to what level you want to enter. And Stage 1 is the easiest and Stage 11 is the hardest. You can do this with a party and have fun. The next way to get mercenary badges is Weekly Boss Raid. You need to be level 440 to enter and to enter the weekly boss raid dungeon you need to press F10 then click weekly boss raid 
you can practice first if you don't know the boss mechanics. Then go enter after you learned. It's basically a boss that counts the number of damage you deal to them. You can enter up to 7 times and all the damage you accumulated on that 7 attempts will add up. And this is the rewards. There are more content that gives mercenary badges like PvP and Gem Feud. This content is only available at certain times. And it's a bit... <coughs> so participate on your own accord. I'm sure in the future there will be new content that will provide more badges. Just look in the comment section and someone should be mentioning it there. And yeah, of course, I could be missing something here. So just again, go in the comment section. And that's the mercenary badges. And now I think the other endgame content that you should be doing is farming silver. And you can do that in Boba's cave. Get an SR Tomotorge Enchanter and farm Boba's cave. Another option for silver farming is outer sewers. But only do this if you have high enough attack that could make short work of enemies there. Good thing about outer sewers is plan new drops there. Okay, what else? Mm. Oh, world bosses. This content is only available at certain times. So just ask in the world chat when's the next spawn. To be honest, I don't like this content because I can't adjust my schedule just for a few drops of items that may be useful or may not be. But if you're interested, have fun. There's also Legendary World Boss, if that's what it's called. It's basically Morinponya on the field. She spawns at a certain place in Parias Forest, north of Parias Forest if I'm correct. This World Boss is pretty strong. Get in a party with strong DPS if you want to get something from it. Okay, I think that's the majority. I know there's more, like getting collections, titles, and gimmicks. Those are a whole world on its own. So if you're interested in those, you gotta dig deeper. And it's not on my channel. I don't do gimmicks and titles. Maybe in the future, but I don't know. Okay, what else? Um, guilds! Join guilds. Guild War. That should be self-explanatory. Guilds has its own quest and raids and hangouts and buffs. If so happen, your guild is high level enough. Okay, the last thing that I could share here is finish off all the main quests because it gives insane rewards that will surely help you grow in the game. And speaking of quests, do the quest from this guy, especially if you're not maxed out yet because this guy gives cards and attributes and all that and a ton of it. Just do it, night. Oh yeah, since we're here, you can go fish. And AFK, I guess that's something to do. I don't know if that qualifies for doing something, but whatever. And of course, before we end this, end game is the time for gearing up. So use all the rewards you get from everything we talked about and get stronger. Anyways, that's it guys. I could be missing a thing or two here, but that should cover up the majority. So hit the thumbs up if this is useful. Share and then subscribe to be part of the Gaming Hardcore family. And as always, this is Gaming Hardcore. See you in the next one.